Greetings in the name of Yahweh HaMashiach. At the end of today's broadcast, I'll have a mailing address, phone number, and website. Please stay tuned. Greetings in the name of Yahweh, the only name given among men, whereby we must be saved. And we do appreciate each and every one of you who has taken your time tuning in this program. And we believe it will be a real blessing to you. And we also have CDs and course literature we send out. We hope that there's some way that you can study along with us on this teaching. We're talking about the anti-Mashiach, or as the King James says, the Antichrist. Going over to the book of First John, we're going to start in the 18th verse. We've read some of this, and we're going to read these and, and keep on going here. All right, it says, this is 1 John 2 and 18, and as usually we say every week, we're reading from what is known as a red-letter edition King James Bible. It was written in 1769. It come from the original 1611 King James Bible. Of course, it did not have the name of Jesus. It had like a Latin Greek word known as Asus, spelled I-S-U-S. Of course, that come from the Greek Jesus, and of course, that backtracks to what they would call the Septuagint. But regardless, this was never the name of the Son of Yahweh, or the Son of God. That Messiah come in his Father's name. And that's the problem today. Getting people to understand that God had a name, a true name. And that his name never changed. This is just the teachings and false teachings of men. So what we have to do is study. Going over to the book of 1 John 2.18, it says, Little children... It is the last time. And ye have heard that Antichrist. Now I'm reading how the King James says. Now, in Hebrew, this is known as Sotain Ha Mashiach. In other words, this here is. Like a, the word Satan actually comes from a Hebrew word called Satan means to act as an adversary, to resist, to oppose, to be an enemy. So we find that here in the book of 1 John 2.18 there was something that the Apostle John was writing about. About a spirit would oppose would be an enemy come against. So he says of course King James says Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many antichrist whereby we know that it is the last time or the last time in the book of 1 John 2.22 verse 2.22 just a few verses down below where we're just reading it says who is a liar but he that denieth that 
King James says Jesus the Messiah he is anti-Mashiach that denieth the Father and Son now first of all we know and if you're not honest with yourself you're never going to be honest with nobody else it's imp- why is it if we went back to the King James Bible we would read a different name spelt a different way than what you would here in John 2.22 in 1 John 2.22 it would say who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus or Jesus I-E-S-U-S is Christ he that would deny it. But then, if you go back to the Greek form, you're going to find that the name's going to change again. You're going to find that it would be who is he, or who is a liar, but he that denieth that Jesus is Christ. Or the, what you would call the Greek word, I-S-O-U-S Now I've just come through three different translations Which one of these translations are right? Now when you read John here and but it goes on because first of all The whole purpose of the changing of name in baptism, if you go to your history, the changing of a name in baptism would affect the true oneness apostolic doctrine for Acts 2 and 38. And the reason why is this. Because what you would have, you would have a denial of who actually come in the flesh by name. You would lose the understanding of the name that the Messiah come in or as a Hebrew would say Mashiach would come in you would lose the understanding of when the Messiah said I come in my father's name because first of all he says here he is anti-Messiah of course King James says Christ that denieth the Father and the Son now first of all the name of Jesus J-S-U-S was never the true Mashiach's name no prophet from Genesis to Malachi ever gave witness to it never gave witness to it that's why several weeks or a couple of weeks ago we went through how to backtrack and it's amazing that when you go back to the Greek of Jesus it has to take you back to a Hebrew word called Yehoshua but still Yehoshua was never the Father's name. It may be accepted among a Trinitarian doctrine, but it could never be accepted among a true apostolic oneness doctrine. Because you're dealing now with where it says the Father and 
son. Now, when you really get to looking at this, what was actually really taking place? What was really going on? What was really going on? What's really taking place? A denial. You know what denies the Father and Son? He that denieth that Mashiach, he is anti-Messiah. Until you really fully understand the true name of the Mashiach, this is where the spirit of anti-Mashiach has got the church in the day and hour we're living in right now. And I understand that what I'm saying is a is something that's very, very tough. But I want to say this again. Right now, through this teaching, this anti-Mashiach spirit, or as the King James would say, anti-Christ, has got the church in a denial of of who the Father and Son is. And let me explain why. Because first of all, you are being taught that the Father, nobody knows His name. Can you really truthfully understand that when you go over and you read that they built altars unto the creator of heaven and earth. And there was offerings made up unto this creator of heaven and earth. These altars were built and altered offered sacrifices. Matter of fact, give you an example. In the book of Genesis 8 and 20. This is what is so scary about this doctrine of denial of the Father and Son. The attack has been on the Father and the Father's name. If you lose the understanding of who the Father is, from Genesis to Malachi, you'll never understand who the true Mashiach is. In the book of Genesis 8 and 20, this is one of the lies that you've been taught. And it says, 8 and 20 of Genesis, it says, And Noah built an altar unto Yahweh. Now, the word for altar is a Hebrew word called Mizbeach. This is where they would offer up animal sacrifices. Anything outside of offering true offerings to the God of Abraham and Isaac was paganism. And you know what amazing is this? In Hebrew, where the King James says, And Noah built an altar unto the Lord. In Hebrew, it's a Hebrew word called Mizbeach, La Yahweh. And the La Yahweh in Hebrew means unto Yahweh. Now, but you know what? Let me go and, and finish this. It says, and took of every clean beast and every clean 
fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar. This was done strictly to the creator of heaven and earth that would in the future from the time of Genesis 8 and 20 would become the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But you're being taught something different. You're being taught denying the Father and Son and you really don't know it. I say you're being taught denying the Father and Son and you really don't even know it. And the reason why is because of this. Here in the book of Genesis 8 and 20, when you find the word, he, I'm talking about Noah, built an altar unto Yahweh, then the first place that you find the word altar, to my knowledge on this, the first place you find the word altar, as what the King James would say, and the word means Baak being used that way is in Genesis 8 and 20. Here in Genesis 8 and 20, this bees, this bees, uh, means Baak, this altar built unto Yahweh, it uses a name here. Where the King James will say the word L O R D capital letters. Now you gotta totally be in denial then because you you are you are going to have to agree that there is a name here, or you gonna have to disagree that there's a name here. And if you disagree that there is a name here, then you've got to disagree with the Scripture. You have totally got to disagree with what the Scripture says. <clears throat> this is where the anti-Mashiach spirit has come. Because first, Genesis 8 and 20 shows this doesn't show the first place the names used for the name of Yahweh but it shows the first place that an altar is or let's say it this way that it would show the first place that we find that man or, or the word altar or the Hebrew word called Mizbeach is used the first place it's used it uses the name what you would have to do, you would have to be in total denial that the creator of heaven and earth had a name and his name was used at this sacrifice of this altar. Because the Bible says that Noah built an altar unto Yahweh. Once you go and you start studying every bit of this, if, like if you go to Genesis, here's Abram, who would eventually become Abraham in Genesis 12, 7. It says, now this is the next place that the word altar is used. And it says that and the Lord, I'm reading how King James says, appeared unto Abram, or Abram, and said unto thy seed, Will I give this land? And there built he an altar unto Yahweh. Again, the same identical word is used again. It's a Hebrew word that's called Le Yahweh, 
or Mizbeach le Yahweh. Again, the second place that we have went to, it shows an altar built unto Yahweh. They offered up sacrifices in the name of Yahweh. And what I'm pointing out is this. There is a denial of the Father and Son. You can talk about the word G-O-D, God, all day long. You can talk about the word Lord, L-O-R-D, all day long. But when it gets down to it, what God are you talking about? What Lord are you talking about? The world has many gods. I said the world has many gods. But what God is it talking about? I said what God is it talking about? Now this world has is stooped in paganism. Satan, the enemy, has got the world exactly where he wants it. He's got them denying the true name of the creator of heaven and earth. A denial of the father and son. I have literally heard preachers say that God has many names and they'll go in total denial total denial of the true name of the creator of heaven and earth. And you've been taught for years anti-Mashiach anti-Mashiach and you've been taught that the anti-Mashiach denies and actually the anti-Mashiach is against the anointed it is against the Mashiach it's against everything the Mashiach does I said it's against everything the Mashiach does It's against assembly. It's against true worship. It's against true salvation. It's against the true word. And it's against the name that identifies the God of heaven and earth. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This is what anti-Mashiach is. If you want to know the real truth of anti-Mashiach, this is probably the first time you've ever heard the truth on it. I said, this is probably the first time that you've ever heard the truth on this. Of what anti-Mashiach really is. Anti-Mashiach is totally against the anointed is what it's against. It's against the Messiah. If you can do away with the Father's name, then you'll never understand who the Father and Son is. The revelation of the Father and Son lies within the true name of the Creator of heaven and earth. And there is a denial. It denies the Father and Son. When you deny the Father, you have denied the Son. Until you understand who the Father is, you will never understand who the Son is. 
Can you explain this to me? Why is it that the day and hour that we're living in? And this started roughly around 325 A.D. Why is it that today, the day and hour we're living in, that people believes that the Father and Son can be a name and they can baptize in titles Father and Son? Put this in the same category. How is it that today people can baptize in the name of Jesus, Jesus, Jesus because it's the same thing. The one that done away with true baptism done away with the truth of the oneness of Yahweh. That's what's happened. I said that's what's really happened today. This is a day an hour that we're living in that people are so confused of understanding the Father and the Son. And it looks like that our time is slowly going out here. We're going to pick this back up because listen, understanding the Father and Son and how things have been taught that we're, we've come into an anti-Mashiach doctrine because of the denial of the Father. The denial of the Father is a denial of the Son. And you're being taught that God's true name has been tossed out, can't be said, can't be read, can't be written. Nobody knows it. This anti-Mashiach spirit has got you exactly where it wants you. Second verse. And we have been reading the book of St. John. Or excuse me, I keep saying St. John. First John. And what it talks about the anti-Messiah. Of course, King James is going to say anti-Christ. And if this is the first time you've tuned into this program, if you hear anything that's contrary to what you believe, you're more than welcome to call us or write us. And I'm pretty sure you will find something that's going to be totally contrary to what you believe. And as we usually say every week, we're reading from a red letter edition King James Bible. All right, over in the book of 1 John 2.22, it says, Who is a liar but he that denieth that Yahweh is the Messiah. He is anti-Messiah, or as King James says, Christ. He is anti-Messiah that denieth the Father and the Son. Now, in Second John 1 and 7, it says, For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Yahweh Mashiach is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an anti-Messiah. Of course, King James will say Christ. Both places that I've read in the King James Bible it uses the name of Jesus. And we understand I have to sometimes go over this because we have people that tunes into this program that's never heard this. Never heard anything like this. 
So, you that have just tuned in, never heard this program before, if you go back to an original 1611 King James Bible, you're not going to find Jesus. You're going to find what is known as Latin Greek, known as Jesus, spelled I-E-S-U-S. It goes back to the Greek Jesus, spelled I-E-S-O-U-S. And it would be good for you to get some literature. All right. You that's been listening, we've been talking about the anti-Messiah. And we understand that at the time that John wrote this, it was the same St. John, the one that wrote St. John, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, and the book of Revelation. Regardless if it was written in 70 A.D., regardless if it was written in the latter part of 97, 98 A.D., regardless. John is talking about an anti-Messiah. And that we understand that they were many, many now anti-Messiahs according to John Uh, uh, in, in the book of First John, we already understand that John. Matter of fact, let me read it. One and four. Saint John. Uh, excuse me. First John, four and three. And every spirit that confesseth not that Yahweh Mashiach is come in the flesh is not of Elohim. And this is the spirit of anti-Messiah. Whereof ye have heard that it should come. And even now already it is in the world. Now at this particular time that the book of John was written there was something already taking place. This The name of Jesus is not even in focus at the time that the writing of the New Testament was written. And you understand that. I said, you understand that. That at that particular time, that when the writing of the New Testament began to take place, The name of Jesus was not even in focus. You're not going to hear this sitting in these churches today. I can tell you that right now. You are not going to hear this. You have never probably ever heard of a true teaching on anti-Messiah. But if you've tuned into this program, and if you've been listening, you have heard, and if you have never heard, you're fixing to hear. Because once you begin to understand that the name of Jesus was not even around at the time of the apostles much less at the time of the Messiah much less at the time of the prophets you could not take any other name once you get a revelation of who the Father's name is. That is what has been attacked. Here in, matter of fact, right here in the book of 2 John in verse 
excuse me, First John 2 and 22. First John 2, 22. It says, Who is a liar? But he that denieth that Yahweh is Mashiach. He is anti-Messiah that denieth the Father and the Son. Now, when you go back to history, and you can't build doctrines on history, you build doctrine on Scripture. And the Scripture is what built the writing of the New Testament. In other words, the writing of the New Testament had a foundation. The foundation of the New Testament was the Old Testament. Once you understand that no writer in the New Testament based a salvation without Scripture is totally impossible. It's impossible to have a salvation without understanding the Old Testament. What people know today as the Old Testament. Over in the book of Genesis, we were reading this in the, in the book of Genesis 8 and 20, where it talks about Noah built an altar unto the Lord, it says. Now that was 8 and 20. And when you go over there, you'll find out that the altar known in Hebrew as Mizbeach le Yahweh means the altar unto Yahweh. Noah built this. If you go to the book of Genesis, you find that in Genesis 12 and 7, that Abram also built an altar unto Yahweh. Now, once you really begin to understand this and understand that in the Old Testament something began to take place. What I'm afraid of sometimes is this. Are these preachers in these churches today afraid to acknowledge truth? And by not acknowledging truth, the people that sits under them, I said the people that sits under them are going to suffer. Are going to suffer. And this is why you have to put stress on what I'm saying. Because when you go to the Old Testament and you find an altar built by Noah, an altar built by Abraham, and when you see that altar built by Abraham or Noah, And you see who they built the altar to. If you'll do this. If you would search out like the word altar. Run through the word altar. And look where it says altar unto 
the Lord, the King James will say. When you see that word Lord, L-O-R-D, you're going to understand that that is a four capital letters and that which is the word Lord and this is a cover up. This is why you're being taught the name of Jesus. Because real, true anti-Mashiach or as the King James would say anti-Christ was against Yahweh who Noah built an altar unto who Abraham or Avram built an altar to and also when he become the name of he inherited the name of Abraham built an altar unto the one that Abraham bought, built an altar unto is the same one that directed Abraham in his life promised him Isaac promised him a seed and the only one that done it was the name of Yahweh the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob was called by a name in the churches today the churches are being totally taught totally against the God of heaven's true name. I said the God of heaven's true name. Once you begin to search this, matter of fact, if you was to go to the book of Genesis 22, And you know that Abraham was directed by the creator of heaven and earth to take his son and offer his son up. Now first of all, Abraham offered sacrifice unto Yahweh. The creator of heaven and earth. In other words, Abraham knew the name of the God of heaven. He called on the same name that Noach called on. That built an altar. Now what I'm talking about right now is really just kindergarten stuff. But when you look at this, and I want to say it this way, I'm not saying the word of Yahweh was kindergarten, but what I'm saying is that it? I'm, I'm trying to put emphasis in that it is simple. You are totally being taught not to know the God of heaven. And you've heard me say this over and over and over and over. In one of these big Pentecostal oneness churches, I heard a preacher preaching that God had 1,500 names. He, I don't know where he's getting his message. He's not even, he, he's not even, get, evidently he either getting his message from man, he's sure not getting it from the word of Yahweh. He's not even getting this from the King James Bible. 
this kind of teaching, all it is is to throw people off from the truth. Such as like this. This is why I keep putting emphasis on this stuff. They'll turn around and say he's got 1,500 names, but then there's one name. They'll say that nobody knows. Nobody can write. Nobody can say it's forbidden. Well, that's the name of the God of heaven. That's the name that Noah built an ark unto. Or excuse me, that Noah, when he got off the ark, built an ark altar unto that's the one that Abram before he become an Abraham Abram built an altar unto Yahweh after he become Abraham and got his full form of a name he built an altar unto Yahweh he's the same one that spoke to Abraham, Yahweh Almighty, Yahweh, told him to take his son and offer him. And in 22 of Genesis 11, it says, And the angel of Yahweh, of course, King James is going to say, And the angel of the Lord. There it is again in LORD capital letters called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And this is where he told him not to lay thy hand upon that child. He seen then that he feared the Creator. He feared God, it says in 2212. And this is where Abraham lifted up his eyes and he seen a ram caught in a thicket where he was just about to offer his son but at the same time he knew that the creator of heaven and earth would have to raise his son from the dead if he would have slayed him. In verse 22.14 of Genesis, it says, and you need to read this, if you, I, listen, if you're a Pentecostal, apostolic, baptized Acts 2.38, and I do put emphasis on this, because Oneness cannot have one name for the Father, one name for the Son. But Trinity, the Trinitarian doctrine, can and they do. They can have one name for the Father and one name for the Son. That's why people baptize titles Father. Son and Holy Spirit or as the King James says Holy Ghost and over in Genesis 22 14 now we're talking about the spirit of anti-Mashiach the spirit of anti-Mashiach that if you will search us out, and of course in Hebrew the word is known as Sotain HaMashiach, which means the word Sotain is like an enemy. It brings accusation. It means to be, to be or act as an adversary, to resist, to oppose. And that's exactly what has happened. That is exactly where we are today. 
and we don't even recognize it. Why do you think 325 A.D. they changed baptism from a name and it's impossible to be the name of Jesus? I asked any oneness anywhere that's listening to this program right now, call me and show me in Scripture that the Father and Son can have a different name. Show me the name for the God of heaven, the name of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That is a very simple thing I've just asked. And you know what? You can't do it. Your doctrine won't let you. All this stuff, have you ever really took consideration how the name of Jesus that's less than 250 years old never was even in the original 1611 King James Bible got in your Bible to bring so much confusion that when you read your Bible, you can't even prove the Son is Jesus by using your Bible from Genesis to Revelations. It's impossible for it to be. I said it's impossible for it to be. So over in the book of Genesis twenty two fourteen, I've got just a, a little bit more time here, and we're going to pick this back up, and then we're going over to the book of Daniel in the next broadcast. But twenty two fourteen says, and and Abraham called the name of the place Jehovah Jireh, as it is said this day, in the mount of the King James says the Lord, it shall be seen. Now, why is it that somebody will ask you? See, this is this is why I put so much emphasis on this part about giving the Father's name, and you can't do it, and then pop up with fifteen hundred names. Listen, you need to really start asking questions when a preacher tells you that stuff. Why is it? That Apostle Peter, who had the keys to the kingdom, called on the name of Yahweh, and he had 1,500 names to use, but why did he use the name of Yahweh? To give the plan of salvation. Is there a conviction in your spirit to know the truth? I said, is there a conviction in your spirit to know the truth? Why did Apostle Peter, 50 days after the resurrection of the Mashiach, give the plan of salvation using the name of Yahweh that they're telling you that nobody knows? Because it's an anti-Mashiach spirit that's got a hold in the churches today. Right before we go to the book of Daniel, I would like to go to the book of Revelations in the second chapter in the 13th verse. Now understanding the book of Revelations some say it was written roughly between 70 A.D. Then you got those that believe around in the 90s, just say run between 97, 98 AD. Now, I'm one that sort of leans to the 98 AD, give or take. But regardless, when the book of Revelations was written, or in the process of being written, 
Apostle John only knew that Mashiach by one name. It was never the name of Iezus, never Jesus, or neither Jesus. And there has been such an attack on the true name is what's really happened. And once you go and do any studying, and this anti-Messiah spirit, I said this anti-Messiah spirit that has hit the people to not the know not to know the name of their creator and that's really what's happened and people has failed for it and the reason why is because first it's a shocker when you find out that the name of Jesus never was the Messiah's true name. And that's very simple because when you start backtracking it and when you hear somebody tell you that that Messiah had a name and the apostles and prophets gave witness to it, you better run the other way because translation disproves this. That's why when you start going back to the original 1611, it changes. Go back to the Greek, it changes. And then the Greek has nothing to stand on, so it's got to take you to a Hebrew word. But but the true name had to be First of all, Apostle Peter, on the day of Pentecost, gave the first plan of salvation, quoting from the prophet Joel's message, using the name of Yahweh. Matter of fact, it ought to end right here. This should be the end of it. You should believe what Apostle Peter first preached in your King James Bible backs this up. Go to the book of Acts using your King James Bible. Go to the second chapter. Start in the 16th verse of the second chapter of the book of Acts. Read down to verse 21. In verse 21, he quotes from Joel 2.32. He only quotes part of the verse But the part that he does quote uses, and he used, and your King James Bible proves this. He quoted from it using the name of Yahweh. And if you continue reading in the book of Joel 2.32, you'll see how Apostle Peter only quoted part of the verse. Because that same verse has the name of Yahweh in it three times. Now, that alone ought to really end everything. In other words, believe the Word. Believe what Apostle Peter preached on the day of Pentecost. I said, believe what he preached. He didn't preach no other name. So over in the book of Revelation 2.13, at this particular time, we understand there were things taking place. But it says, 
Revelations 2.13 says, I, I know thy works, and where thy dwellest, even where Satan's seed is. And thy holdest fast my name. Now, holdest fast my name. Now, we already know that the Messiah is doing the talking. It's impossible that he's talking about the name of Jesus. Then it goes on and says, And has not denied my faith. Even in the days wherein Antipas was my faithful murderer, who was slain among you, where Satan's or where Satan dwelleth. In Revelation three eight says I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and has kept my word, and has not denied my name. Now, the reason why I read this, both these verses in the book of Revelations, when he's talking about a name, until you can come to terms that you really acknowledge that that Messiah walked on the face of this earth 2,000 years ago, was not in the name of Jesus. That's why Apostle Peter, if we just used what Apostle Peter gave of the plan of salvation in the book of Acts, then we can understand that Acts 2.38 had to be based on the same name. But through the attack through that anti-Mashiach spirit. Through that anti anti or that spirit of anti-Mashiach or as the King James says Antichrist spirit. This is what has happened to the true name of the Mashiach. When you find where John talks about the anti-Messiah. Of course, the Hebrew is known as Sotain HaMashiach. And the word Sotain comes from a Hebrew word that actually means accusation or an enemy. And it breaks down to a root word called Satan. To be or act as an adversary, to resist or oppose, and actually it ties into the adversary, Satan. This is really where it ties into, with the word anti-Mashiach. It's against, it's an enemy to the truth. Going over to the book of Daniel. In the book of Daniel 7 and 8. In the book of Daniel 7 and 8. Now this is very interesting. Now I understand there's a lot of teaching on the end time. So I'm going to read this the way the King James is reading. And understand the timing of this. Because the timing of the end time is so critical to understand the timing when things are said. What I say also on this may be totally contrary to what you believe. 
But if you'll examine this, you'll understand where we're coming from. Daniel sub 8 says, I considered the horns. And behold, there came up among them another little horn. Before whom three um, excuse me, whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things. Now, you've got several different teachings on this. I said you have several different teachings on this. You have people that teach that the book of Daniel has already been fulfilled. Do I believe that? No. I do not believe it. But you have people that believe this. Now, but my point is, is this. If you will backtrack this little horn, find out who is speaking or has a mouth speaking great things. Alright, let me give you an example. Also in the book of Daniel, 7 and 20. Before we really start dealing with this, I'm going to read some verses here. 7 and 20 says, And of the ten horns that were in his head, and of the other which came up, and before whom three fell. Now I was reading while ago in Daniel 7 and 8. Now I'm reading actually the interpretation that was given to Daniel in Daniel 7 and 20. Even of that horn that had eyes and a mouth that spake very great things, whose look was more stout than his father's. All right, now, if we examine this and search this out, and you start back tracking all of this, start studying all of this. Matter of fact, let me read the book of Daniel in 8 and 11. Because Daniel 7 and 8, 7 and 20 was all talking about the same person. All talking about the same person. Okay. In the book of Daniel. 8. And verse. Let me see exactly. Because we're going to come back on some of this. Okay. In verse 11. Daniel 8 and 11. It says. Yea he magnifieth himself even to the prince of host prince of the host and by him the daily sacrifice was taken away and the place of the sanctuary was cast down now 
if you rightly divide the word of Yahweh, everything that I have read in 7 and 20, in 8 in, in 7 and 8 of Daniel, Daniel 7 and 20, and also here in the book of Daniel, 8 and 11. Now you have to understand, there's a lot of people that teaches that the book of Daniel has already been fulfilled. A lot of people believe this. Now, regardless if it was, I don't believe it was, I believe all this is still in the future. Even through the history, when you take the timing of it, it's still all in the future. Let me go over to the book of Revelations with the same thing here. But matter of fact, uh, in in why well, I'm over here in Daniel in the book of Daniel, eleven thirty six says, and the king shall do according to his will, and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself. Above every God, and shall speak marvelous things against the God of gods, and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished. For that that it is determined shall be done. Every bit of everything I've read in Daniel 7 8. Daniel 7.20, Daniel 8.11, and also here in the book of Daniel 8.36. Now, I'm going, I'm going to go back to this. But right now, I'm going to go on over to the book of Revelation here in just a minute. But I'm going to read you something that Apostle Paul said. Following the same identical pattern. Apostle Paul, in his day that he was living in, I said, Apostle Paul, in the day that he was living in, says here in the second chapter of the book of Second Thessalonians, it says, now, first of all, Thessalonians, you will find that Thessalonians was written roughly around, some say between 52 and 54 A.D. So here's Apostle Paul. He's taken... Whether it was written between 52 and 54 A.D., Apostle Paul is going back to what Daniel said. I said, Apostle Paul is going back to what Daniel said. In verse of 2 Thessalonians 2.3, it says, let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come. Now we understand that the word for that day shall not come is in italics. But you have to understand how it's being read and the reason why it was in there. It's in there because we understand that this was talking about the coming. All you got to do is read up above the verses. A lot of times people will take things in the New Testament, King James, throw it out because they say it was wrote in italics. It really wasn't in there. A lot of times that's true. Not every time. 
A lot of times the Greek language or the Hebrew language is using words to where a lot of times in translation they would have to add to for us to understand those words. It's not really every time they're adding to. But either way, at this particular time, Apostle Paul says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a fallen away first, and the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Now, in Apostle Paul's time, He's actually talking about the same thing that we've been talking about in Daniel. Every place that I've read in the book of Daniel, this is the same identical thing that Apostle Paul is talking about. The son of perdition. You know who all this is? All of this that we've read is actually the anti-Mashiach. In verse 4 of 2 Thessalonians, The second chapter, verse 4. Who opposes and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, shewing himself that he is God. Now, the reason a lot of times this verse is misunderstood because there's two doctrines on this. A lot of people that believe that the book of Daniel has already been fulfilled believes that the temple that this is talking about here was the temple that was in Jerusalem before it was destroyed in 70 A.D. And now if you're one that believes that, I mean, that's what you believe. I don't teach it. I don't believe it. I believe every bit of this that we're talking about is a future event. And let's say it this way. Let's say that all this has already been fulfilled. Then the anti-Messiah was still opposing the true God of heaven is what he's doing. He's still opposing the true God of heaven. Now, for us to really understand all of this, And understand that at this particular time in the book of Daniel let's say in the 11th chapter when you study it you got to understand is this already happened? If it has if you go to the book of Daniel and study it you're going to see that this anti-Messiah regardless if it's already happened or not, was opposing Yahweh of heaven. He wasn't opposing Jesus. He was opposing coming against the God of gods. Speaking against the God of gods. I said speaking against the God of gods. Same is over in the book of the seventh chapter of the book of Daniel. In verse 8, where we was reading, all of this is opposing, opposing the true God of heaven. Now, Over in the book of Revelations. In 
verse I want to see. Hold on for a minute. Book of Revelation. We find that the same system, this same mouth that was in the book of Daniel, and we go. All I'm doing right now is reading this. I'm going to go back. I may do it on the next broadcast, but I want to go back. I want to read something here. And it looks like that my time is coming and gone. I didn't know it's come out quick. And we're going to pick this back up. We're going to deal with the mouth that speaks great things. It looks like that our time is coming and gone. And we do appreciate each and every one of you that has taken your time to tune in to this program. And we believe that it will be a real blessing to you. And we hope that you will call someone up the next time. And let it be a blessing for them. So till the next broadcast at the same time. We appreciate you. We love you. Shalom. The mailing address for Yahweh Ministries is 775 McDonald Road, Covington, Georgia, 30014, USA. 775 McDonald Road, Covington, Georgia, 30014, USA. Be sure and ask about the Father's Name CD and the free literature. Phone 770-784-0703, 770-784-0703. Our website is yahwaministries.org. That's y-a-h-w-a-h hyphen ministries dot o-r-g. y-a-h-w-a-h hyphen ministries dot o-r-g. Until next time, we bid you shalom.